Alright guys, such a back again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Once again, cheating drama is ripe for discussion with the Optic guys considering the possibility that in the CDL, or at least certainly since the inception of Call of Duty Esports, some teams and players have utilized devices in the crowd or alternatives to find a way to cheat in terms of figuring out what their opposition is doing in that specific round. Has this been done recently? Is this possible to actually get rid of? What other elements of cheating might be going on here? And have teams used this over the last couple of seasons to gain big advantages when the prize money has gone absolutely through the roof. Very much to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Now we're just going to start off with the cheating stuff straight away and this from Capsule I thought was hilarious. Hopped on an old Boston Players League PC and Sound EQ was already on. Now we know last year Boston were known as the biggest Sound EQ cheeses and the Sound EQ has been to be honest probably the biggest cheating drama of the last couple of seasons. There's always going to be cheating conversations in absolutely every sport. Doesn't matter what it is, whether it's the team has paid off the refs, whether it's the whole like, um, you know, the de-inflated footballs or whatever it was a few years ago, or what we're going to discuss here in a second with even in baseball, where apparently when the team knew that there was going to be a curveball coming, they would be smashing a trash can to tell the, well, the pitcher was going to throw the curveball. So they would smash a trash can so that the batter knew that it was going to be that shot. Th these things happen everywhere. There's always cheating dramas. Absolutely. You can't possibly avoid it in sports. And as the old saying goes, if you ain't cheated, you ain't trying. And it's happened in esports as well. So sound equalization was supposedly discovered on the PCs during the Cold War season. Now in Cold War, Apparently, this was a big talking point of a few months ago now, and Dashi actually implied that there were certain teams, one specific team, and the team that he implied was Toronto, and even Hixie actually said that it was Toronto. Like, of course, he wasn't on the Toronto team at the time in Carl War, but he said that it was, but then I think Marky B and Cami said, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Definitely not the case. But the rumor is that one team, maybe Toronto, maybe not, discovered sound equalization as a setting on the PCs during Carl war nobody else used it and it was enabling them to have all the knowledge and the sounds that teams other teams didn't have in search and destroy and gain a significant advantage in that game mode of course nowadays we know though everyone knows about it all the players are using it well you can't use it on land it's bad but online they couldn't really stop you so do what you want and some players still wouldn't some players would and the boston guys were known for just abusing the hell out of this you know like awakening was considered to be the chief cult but it's not like, you know, the entire team was going to be using it. So Cap says having turned up to the offices here with their brand new team they've got this season with, a, you know, obviously Snoopy, who was only there for champs, Cap's Dull, and then Slasher and Priest, who have just recently joined. All the old guys are gone. That, um, you know, the Saudi Q was already on that PC, the league PC, of course, from last season. I wonder who it could possibly be. And, um, you know, Prolet records it was possibly Kremp, and Kremp comes in the replies here. And even Cap says, I opened Spot. Spotify and it was insane, which is pretty funny because I guess it, um, you know, changes the way all the sounds seem on the PC as well. Now, um, you know, Zach says, or Zed says, sorry, that was Zin's PC. He started it for all of us. Don't know if I necessarily believe or agree with this, but intrigue your thoughts in the comments below. Now, the type of cheating we're going to discuss today is not cheating like this. I actually saw this clip that someone pointed out to me that, um, because this is on console, actually, this is on PS4, and yet someone is, I mean, yeah, these shots are not legit, so maybe it's even possible now nowadays on Black Ops 4 to be victory wall hacking and aimbotting on the console, which is definitely not ideal. But we're not talking about the Jimbo type of cheating, you know? We're not talking about wall hacking. While this has happened and unfortunately likely will continue to happen for players in the challenger size, players you'd think don't do this that often. Now, unfortunately, some players do. Jimbo got exposed for it. His account was banned during the Challenger World Championship not that long ago. And um, I mean, it's just absolutely crazy stuff that his account got banned. I don't think he was cheating right then and there, but he was cheating, we believe, in the qualifiers leading up to this one online, and therefore he got exposed. And there were some funny clips that came up from a BZ, and he was like, Nick Classic, who was FaZe's sub, was teaming with Jimbo and used to say, damn, this guy's actually the best player I've ever seen. Like, how is he possibly this good? The talking points that the Opti guys are having are around the crowd reactions. Now, crowd reactions in esports is not a new thing in terms of using them to your advantage. 
Often you'll find that when a player is defusing the bomb or when a player is coming up behind another player, the crowd are naturally going to go, oh, like there's going to be more energy in the crowd. This isn't really a thing that affects regular sports because in normal sports, all the information is available. You're playing tennis, you're playing football or whatever. You can see what's going on on the pitch, on the courts, whatever, right? Whereas in esports, I can't see what's going on in their monitors across the other side of the stage. The crowd can, and therefore there's an information gap there which can be potentially exploited. Obviously, it's been a big talking point at Counter-Strike for years, especially, I think, the Astralis team at one of the Denmark majors. The crowd was just blatantly helping like the, the local team. It was actually outrageous. And we know this has happened with certain individuals in the crowd over the last couple of seasons have, you know, just because they're fans of the team and the player talked about it right and tried to help their you know their team now a lot of the time these people either get quickly shut down are not loud enough to be heard or get kicked out of the venue that does happen but um you know that's pretty blatant attempts to give information to the players that they shouldn't otherwise have but what if you're not being blatant about it right what if you're not holding up a sign that says a or b what if a team is trying to find a way to make this very subtle. So this is the talking point that the Optic guys have. I'll share what Bo said as well on this story in the baseball size. And then Scump and Hitch seem to think like, this will have been done. Someone will have tried this. It's so easy to accomplish that some team will have thought about a way, especially you've got to think with all the money that's gone into this sport over the last several years, the prize pools now for these majors, 500k on the line for each one of them, the prize pools for the world championship. Surely some team has tried this as you know, bad as it would be from a competitive integrity perspective. You've got to think that um, on the balance of probabilities, someone's given this a go. What? You never yeah, saw they, that scandal? They got caught cheating, right? Yeah. Yeah. They got caught cheating, but yeah, like- That's why a lot of people hate them. But yeah. like if, it, if, if, a, if, you love if a curveball's coming, someone makes a loud ass noise in the stands, like- doof, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they used to have it in the tunnel. We were talking about it yesterday. They used to have like, they'd use the back screen and mm -hmm. then they'd have a monitor like in the dugout. And if, it, if they saw like a curve coming, they'd hit a trash can in the tunnel. <laughs> that was, that, that's like what they were doing. Really? That's the only thing I know about the Astros is banging on the trash can. Sick mother. They, they were in their tunnel just hitting a trash can every time a curveball was coming. And apparently they came out and said that like all teams do it. They just did it way more obvious. I'm sure. <laughs> like, I'm sure all teams do One it. little. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a. It's, uh, you, it's like you're looking at a certain player. Dude, I could. You're telling me if we were like screen watching a search tournament, no delay. Dog. And we were in the same room. You could just look at me and I just go. Going yeah, a. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there were times. This where is they're going A and this is B. There are times where I thought about like, how easy it would going be. B. Like I, if I'm sitting, I'm sitting watching the game. Like I got my vision camera because I'm right there. And like you guys are playing on stage, and I look and I see TK going B, and I just hit you with a little like flashlight. It would be easy. It would be so easy. But like it would be sickening. Or I have an AirPod in. It's definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's done it. And for it. sure, someone's done. it. You think so? No doubt. The, the, I mean, the most here. notable, like the most notorious way to do it is look at the crowd or have like a little earphone to the side. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Remember, yeah, like back in that. Used to play with their yeah, Rick. Yeah, Rick used to play with his earphone off. Oh, that's yeah, true. Ricky really? played with one earphone off all the time. To listen to the casters. Just like it was like a habit. I like, think they're going be. <laughs> So I don't really want to bash on Keeks here, right? But Keeks is like the kind of the classic example of the crowd's cheating thing, shall we say, like especially during the Vanguard World Championship when Keeks was making a fair bit of noise, shall we say, in the front row in terms of what's going on. And this funny meme was born as a result. But in that case, it's pretty blatant what's happening. What if you're being less blatant though? And this, to be fair, I remember we talked about this last season because Scump had also talked about the whole Hans Neiman drama. I don't know if you guys are following this at all. I know it's been a big talk point though and it even made loads of mainstream news when this was confirmed last week sometime so if you guys don't know the story behind this Magnus Carlsen the best chess player in the world played a match against Hans Niemann and there's been there had been at the time rumors for years that Hans Niemann was um you know was cheating in some respect and it's been confirmed that he cheated in online games on chess.com quite a while ago he then played an over the board game against Magnus Carlsen and Magnus just 
thought really that some of the moves that he made and the way that he made those moves and you know the, the time that he spent on the decisions just felt wrong it felt too computer like and um you know magnus wasn't happy he basically forfeited the game that he played the next day and made the indication that he thought hans was cheating in some way or another a load of grandmasters looked into his game like hans's game just to figure out like you know what's the percentage chance that his game play was legitimate or what's the percentage chance that he was getting some outside support and then the whole talking point was like all right how could you possibly cheat in chess in an over the board game and people came up with like the anal bead theory and this is where this kind of uh, talking points kind of uh, what became a bit of a meme in gaming culture in general as to how this might be done there's other ways that you could theoretically cheat with like an earpiece or something and tell you the moves or what to play and um, you know the theory was that Hans's gameplay was significantly better in games that were live broadcasted because it's much easier to cheat, have someone help you cheating when they can also see what the moves are rather than you having to transmit the moves them and they give you the moves back. This was all the talking point anyway and recently this has now been effectively cleared. Now it's not to say that Hikaru and Magnus don't think Hans cheated but it's just Hans decided to bring a big lawsuit against these guys and it just became easier for all parties just to call it a day really. But I still believe that those guys in question think that Hans is definitely pretty dodgy and although his rating did increase quite considerably in the following months it's now fallen off somewhat so anyway it's still a bit of a discussion in the chess world that I keep up with a fair bit. Now this is the thing though in Call of Duty you don't necessarily need the anal beams do you to get the information across. What you can do probably far easier is having someone in the crowd I mean even Hitch said what if you got your videographer with um you know something on his lens or just something like that anyway where you could just give a little clue across to the these people or even method said right just some sort of someone in the crowd maybe in one of the front rows that's you know touching their face in a certain way or maybe they've got a pair of sunglasses maybe they you know put the sunglasses up they put them down or something when it's a when it's b i don't know and all it takes is for that player on the main stage to have a quick look over their monitor to the side of their monitor just to look at that individual and just to figure out um you know whether the other team is going a or going b as a result it would be so difficult to actually figure this out right. And I've been watching some videos lately from this, uh, what's his name? Steven Bridges, I think he's like a card counter. And one of the strategies in card counting is you have a team and you have someone who plays on the table and just plays like the minimum every time. And then when the count is good, i.e. the odds are in the favor of the player rather than the house, then he makes like a very subtle signal that will then call over the, the heavy hitter player that will then come in and pay for the big money and therefore win the team money on the whole. And these signs are super subtle, you know, like it just could be just slightly adjusting something on your body. It could be anything really. And like, how do you, and the casinos have all the cameras, right? They're looking all around the tables to try and figure out, is anyone trying to, you know, car count or cheat our game, even though it's not really cheating, but whatever. If the casinos lose money, they don't like it. And still it's, it's almost impossible to catch these people, even with all the surveillance technology the casinos have trying to do that. So trying to stop this in this situation in the ways that, um, you know, method and scump have just described seems borderline impossible and I think to be honest there was some talking point in CSGO a while ago I tried to find a story on this I couldn't quite find it so it might not have happened I might just be misremembering but I think there was some story in CSGO like we're talking maybe seven eight years ago where something like this might have happened where you know I mean you can see in this uh, thing yeah, they are B it's like not something as obvious as that but um you know you could have someone up on the grandstands with a little flashlight on their phone that would give you the indication like I don't know it could be done. Is it done? I don't know. Scump seems to think that it's very possible and I mean look if you're the teams, if you're the CDL, how do you even go about preventing something like this? It seems impossible. The only way to do it really is to not play Search and Destroy because you know in respawns this isn't feasible but in Search and Destroy it is possible to show which team is going where and I mean you imagine game 7 round 11 or game 9 round 11 world championship grand final just for that one specific round you get you know maybe your team owner you have a signal set up with him and he's sitting there with the crowd and he you know puts his sunglasses down and you know it's going to be A. I mean that could be a pretty this is a pretty big talking point potentially but very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below whether this is plausible or not hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time